Aloha, and thanks for listening to the Why Hypnosis Podcast, promoting quality hypnosis and NLP education on the islands of Hawaii, where I interview the top hypnotists, hypnotherapists, and NLP practitioners in the world so that you can learn their secrets to create positive changes in your life and the lives of others. You can subscribe to the Hawaii Hypnosis Newsletter at www.hawaiihypnosis.org. You will receive subscriber-only content such as free contests, articles to help you learn hypnosis and NLP, updates on upcoming hypnosis slash NLP trainings in Hawaii, plus an exclusive hypnosis audio that is only available to the newsletter subscribers. Thanks for listening. So our guest today is uh, Jorgen Rasmussen. Um, Jorgen entered the world of change work over 11 years ago and asked himself many questions that didn't seem to be to have been answered. Not until he set on his set out on his own did he began to gain some of the understanding of what was actually missing. Some of his clients he had helped throughout his career were classed as impossibles, people whom other therapists could not help create change. His creative and provocative approach is stark is a is in stark contrast to many of the existing trends in personal development. Now, Jorgen, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to um, allow me to interview you today. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm I'm wondering if you'd like to give um, my audience just a brief, I guess, intro or a brief description of uh, what you do. Right. Well, I uh, essentially see clients all day. Um, helping people create changes and, and update their own subjective experience. And um, I teach some seminars from time to time. I authored a book uh, named Provocative Hypnosis. And um, I'm a lifelong martial artist and teach some uh, reality-based uh, self-defense stuff as well. So that, that's essentially how I spend my time. <laughs> Hyp- hypnotizing your opponents in the ring, I take it. Haven't done that. Haven't done that. I think that would be a whole new ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, a couple days ago on Facebook, I had asked uh, a couple questions in various hypnosis groups. Or I told people I was interviewing you, and I wanted them to field me some questions. And one right. question, um, this gentleman, he wants to know how your work adds value to your life outside of work. How how my work adds value to my life outside of work? Well, yeah. Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. Um I have a few I have a few uh, responses to that. Well let, let me give you a quick client story to, to kind of set the frame for a, a good answer. Many, many years ago I had a woman call me on the phone and I had this this rule at that time, which I actually still had, that I would not work with people on welfare who were on welfare for the particular problem that they called for. So, for example, if somebody had a welfare deal for, for doing depression, then I wouldn't see them for depression. Just because I noticed over time that results had to, you know, tended to be a lot tougher to get if they had lucrative welfare deals. You know, the Norwegian welfare system is, is really outrageous. Uh, and this woman, I think she called for some fears and panic attacks and stuff like that and had this lucrative welfare deal. So I essentially just told her that my policy was to not work with people uh, on welfare for those types of problems. And as far as I can recall, I was really straightforward and pretty polite. That That's my impression. I didn't call her any names. I didn't raise my voice. And uh, she said, well, okay. And, and she hung up. And I didn't think any more of it. And then later that night, she calls me in tears. And she said, you're the most horrible human being I've ever met. And I was like, you haven't met me. <laughs> what's, what's going on? Um... And she was like, well, there you go again, you arrogant. She called me arrogant. She called me uh, a bunch of, of, uh, of names. And she said that she'd been to her doctor because she had a nervous breakdown after talking to me on the phone and her best friend had been over for hours. And she'd never she'd never had as unpleasant an experience before as, as that phone call would be. I was... 
I was puzzled and curious because it, it made no it made no sense to me whatsoever. And then she started ranting and raving about you know how much money her husband makes and how successful her kids are and how they have two cars and uh, you know that that I was essentially an asshole for for looking down on pe you know down on people on welfare. And I, I just let her speak for a while, and I, you know, shut up, and I, and I said, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way, and, and I said, have you noticed throughout this conversation that I haven't said anything about, you know, what kind of car I drive? It's, it's not impressive to begin with, so there's no reason to, but, but uh, what kind of car I drive, how much money I make, or, or, or how successful I am, or, or am I, or am not? Could it be that you look down on yourself like you are know, there, and, and therefore you're projecting it onto me and being really aggressive about it? And she started ranting and raving again, and, and then she, you know, slammed down the phone. And uh, the, the intriguing part about this for me is that during the 13 years that I've done this work, I've been called everything you could imagine. You know, from extreme flattery to, 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 to people writing me nasty letters and, and, and stuff like that. And, and what's going to happen when you do change work if you really want to connect with people and really join them in their explorations? They're going to activate a lot of strong emotions in themselves. And they're going to project the stuff that they're uncomfortable with onto you and see those qualities in you. And of course, throughout the years, I've had the same experience with other clients. Uh, I don't know if you read the introduction to my book, but I, I, I write something to the extent of, of that some people have told me that I better change the tone in my book because people could be, uh, you know, thinking that I had contempt or felt disgust for some of my clients. And, and my response was, well, actually, I did, you know. I, I have had clients who I, you know, really felt contempt for or disgust for or just wanted to, to choke, you know, <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, who like really rubbed me the wrong way. And these were very often clients who reminded me of aspects of myself that I wasn't comfortable with. Does, does, does that make sense to you? That yes. if, if you if you work with clients professionally and and you really enter into that you know experience with them and you push their buttons and, and they do stuff, you're gonna help activate stuff in them that that's unresolved to put it that way you know and 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 your you as the agent of change is gonna have the same experience. So I would say that that one immediate benefit is that my clients will you know, tend to show me my shadow sides. Uh, they'll, they'll tend to, to show me the aspects of my own experience that I've been rejecting or, or, or disowning. And hadn't it been for me spending time around those clients, you know, I, I might not have discovered it and had the chance to, to practice self-acceptance with that. At other times, even positive stuff, when I've met people who who I've perceived as very brilliant or very creative, and I've kind of almost felt a bit self-conscious around them, well, you know, th those are positive shadow sides as well. And, you know, sometimes a sign that I might pr be projecting those aspects entirely onto them and admiring them and, and using that as an excuse not to develop those qualities in myself. So... Uh, I, I would say the path to uh, self-acceptance, uh, largely, and, and also the path to other acceptance. Um, it's, it, it's a bit like if, if, you, uh, if you're in a deep love relationship. Uh, at, le at least this is, this, is, this is how I know that I'm in one. You know, I'm very happily married. Uh, and one way I know that I am is because the relationship has activated my entire emotional range. And to, to me, to a large extent, that's what being alive, alive is about. You know, really getting to activate all aspects of living. And I've uh, been fortunate enough to have a lot of the same work 
with my client work. So, uh, does this resonate with you, or, or? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. The um, you were talking about the shadow sides. I was thinking about different examples of my life when it does resonate with me. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you, you know, I uh, I I have a cool metaphor for you. I very often uh, very often use with uh, with at least some clients. Uh, people who seem low on the self-acceptance side. And let me ask you this. Uh, Antonio, do you have some Nazi sympathies? Some what? Nazi sympathies. You know you know, Nazi Germany? Yeah. The ideology of, of Nazism? Yeah. Do you, do you, have, any, do you have, any, have any Nazi tendencies? Ooh, by Nazi tendencies, what do you mean? Very, um... Well, are, are you sympathetic to the ideology? Do you think you think in... in Nazi ways, or, or have any of those like tendencies internally? Nah, I would say no. Well, you know, I, I often I've often asked this question of, of audiences, and it's, it's a great way to kind of wake them up. It works better than morning coffee. You know, if 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 morning coffee doesn't quite do it.